Hi, I'm Jim McPherson, and this is my newly built Miromatic. I wanted to put some videos out to show how it works. It's a great tool for making mirrors. Um, I've got mine set up right now. I have a 12 inch uh, plate glass mirror blank set up. I'm done with hogging, and so I'm going on to fine grinding with 220 grit. I have used a dial indicator on a stationary flexible arm that uh, I can put into position to center it within, I can get about 20 thousandths of an inch accuracy. I have, uh, this is the eccentric, and this is the overarm. A few modifications from the standard Miromatic where I've used uh, T-slot aluminum in some places where they needed slots just because it was easier for me to do and it makes a lot smoother action. It's pretty cheap to do those modifications. So I'm going to uh, show you how the Miromatic works whenever you're uh, fine grinding. This is my tile tool. It's made of hydrostone. It's about an inch thick. I have my tools are flattened marbles that I picked up at Joann's or you can find them at any craft store in the flower arranging department. And uh, they were spilled onto the mirror and then all faced flat down on the mirror and then I poured the hydrostone on top of them. And once the hydrostone was setting I put in a one inch PVC pipe end cap. And then I put some epoxy steel on the bottom because a lot of pressure is placed onto the bottom of the end cap and it would uh, bore through the plastic if I didn't do that. So this is the tool. I've already got some water and grit on the mirror. And I'll show you how the Miromatic works. I've got it set up right now for a stationary overarm. And so what that means is the, uh, the overarm will have very little movement. I've got maybe a half an inch of movement from the eccentric drive as this turns it makes the overarm go back and forth, just very, very small amount right now. And uh, the overarm fits right down to this hole. I have about a 15% overhang. As I grind the mirror, I will check to make sure that the radius of curvature is not changing. If it's going one way or the other, I'll adjust the arm until uh, the radius of curvature stays the same while I'm grinding so that I get a nice, good sphere. So this is how the Miromatic works. See as the uh, arm stays pretty much stationary, the outside of the tool is moving rapidly, but it's about the same speed as the outside of the mirror, so the, the outside of the mirror doesn't ground as much as the inside does. And if you come around, you can see that the tool is moving rather rapidly in relationship to the center of the mirror, and so more grinding gets done in the center than does on the outside, and that keeps the sphere in the correct shape. So I'm going to add some more grit to it. Now a little bit of water. And you can see, you can hear it change its pitch as I add water. And that's it. Instead of me walking around the barrel, getting sweaty, I can just watch this thing go. I've got it set at 85 RPM right now, and that's pretty fast. I might move it down to 60 RPM so it doesn't look messy. I don't have any weight on it right now because I'm just testing fine grinding. As I figure out where the correct radius and curvature placement of the arm is, then I'll put some more weight on there and go through the grips rapidly. So that's how the Miromatic works. As I continue through the grinding, I'll hopefully make more videos and show you how I polish and figure this mirror.